and today's video is going to be how to get famous on YouTube, how to grow on YouTube, how to have your videos go viral, and just how to get your channel up and going in general. I have been asked to make this video since the very beginning of my channel, and I've been putting it off for the longest time for a few reasons, one being there is seriously so much to say in one video that I'm going to have to spread it out, so I think today I'm going to be primarily focusing on how to grow your channel, gain subscribers, everything I just listed, versus the money side of things like how to make YouTube your actual job, how to set up affiliate links, get sponsorships, monetize your channel, etc. So if you guys would like to see a video on that in specific, like how to make YouTube an actual career, that's a whole separate ball game. So let me know, give this video a thumbs up and I will do that video. This is the second video in my series of like how to with social media vids. I did a how to get famous on Instagram video that actually is approaching half a million right now. So I was pretty impressed. I didn't expect it to do that well, but I guess a lot of people don't really talk about these things or at least give like real tips. And I'm going to admit a lot of this is luck, but obviously it's not all luck. Like YouTubers who have gotten to the place that they're at, they got there for a reason. Like they put in work. We do have control over a lot of the things that get us to go viral and grow and gaining subscribers, etc. So I'm going to give you all my tips and tricks for what I do know and what I truly think can help you and your channel if you are making a channel or you are in the process of trying to grow the one you already have. So first things first, when you start your channel, I think you should have a reason why, something that keeps you motivated because it doesn't happen overnight. Like you have to genuinely enjoy what you're doing or else you're going to get sick of it and you're going to give up if you just expect to get famous overnight like that. These things can definitely help to speed up the process, but you just can't be disappointed right off the bat if you don't get a million hits on your very first video. So keep that in mind when you're getting started. You should know what you want other people to get out of your videos and what you want to get out of your videos. For example, when I started my channel, I wanted to document my life, help other people and share my experiences. I'm pretty sure I've done that. Like I feel very, very accomplished in that sense, and that is what matters to me, and I think that people can see that in my videos. I have shared things that other people couldn't necessarily talk about unless they went through the same thing. For example, my ADD. That's something I've struggled with my entire life. I've made videos about it, and people can see in my videos how real I'm being when talking about that subject. So a lot of people do suggest that when you make a channel, you should do like the cliche how-to videos because people easily search those. If that's what you want to do, do that, but I would suggest doing something that still relates to you so you can add your passion and your personal input to whatever you're talking about so yeah how-to videos they do get hits right off the bat I never really went that route I didn't even actually hear that piece of advice so much later but if you do a how-to video it's definitely gonna show through the video if you actually care about whatever it is that you're doing a how-to video on don't just make a video because you think it's gonna do well or you think people would want to see it if that was the case you guys I would do a lot of certain types of videos that I've never done or I would do more of because I know that those are things that do well, but do what you personally have a passion for and want to talk about and have experience with. Think of something that makes you unique and that people go to you for. If they have a question, they want to know how you have followers on Instagram. They want to know how you grew your hair out the way that you did. They want to know why you wear colored contacts and where you get them from and how you put them on, etc. If you're doing like a how-to kind of video or if you want to do a story time, what is your go-to experience that you tell people when you meet them right off the bat? Like the craziest thing that's ever happened to you that people are genuinely interested in hearing about. Keep that in mind. Same thing with conspiracy theories. It has to be what you're genuinely passionate about and what people know you for, even if it's it's not on the internet yet it could just be in your personal life in high school whatever it is don't feel awkward when filming I promise I'm gonna get to the technical stuff later in this video but don't feel awkward I felt so weird talking to myself in a camera in the beginning and it definitely showed so think about what you notice and what you like in other creators whether it's their editing style or the way they get really close to the camera or the way they laugh or they're super bubbly or they make corny jokes and try to incorporate that into your videos because you know that you like seeing those in other people's videos but be yourself don't try to be Jenna Marbles or Shane Dawson. Don't try to replicate someone else's content because that's also going to show if it's not genuinely your personality. So be yourself. Let it shine through your videos. It's okay to mess up. If you mess up really bad, you can easily edit it out or you can just leave it in and it'll be funny. So have fun with it. Don't put yourself under a bunch of pressure when it's your first time filming because I know I did. I felt like everything I said had to be perfect and sometimes I still feel that way. So just know that you're in a safe place and that people ultimately will watch you for your personality, not just your content. So don't feel like you have to be a alien or a robot when speaking and sharing whatever it is that you have to say. You can mess up, you can make mistakes, you can burp, you can do this and that. If anything, it'll just make the content more relatable and funny. Once you get a decent amount of following, which I'll 
talk more about how to do that. You're going to want to do a Q&A video because you want people to get to know you as a person. You don't have to do a Q&A, but I would definitely suggest opening up because it makes your relationship with your subscribers that much more closer if they know who you are, where you came from, why you're doing YouTube, what's your purpose on here, are you in school, how old are you, what's your favorite color, whatever. Just basically getting to know you as a YouTuber because I know the people that I watch on a consistent basis, I feel like they're my friends. Or at this point being a YouTuber, like they actually are my friends in real life. But that's because I've gotten to know them through their videos or outside of their videos because they're personable. The next thing is thumbnails and arguably I feel like these could actually be more important than titles a lot of the time. I use PicMonkey. Pretty much every YouTuber uses PicMonkey. I use the free version. You can pay for the other thing if you want to, but I've never used it. I've never found it to be necessary. And you can just either screenshot the video or take a picture and then go on there, add emojis, edit it however you'd like to. And when I first started, I didn't even know that you could do this. I would literally just screenshot the thumbnail randomly in the video and slap emojis on it. So now I try a little bit harder than that because I figured out how to actually do that and how much it really does make a difference. I've also learned that less is more when it comes to thumbnails. Sometimes if you have a bunch of stuff on there, it looks way too overwhelming and people just won't click on it. Sometimes it also doesn't hurt to have something on the thumbnail like in writing that's different from whatever the title is. All of this works in conjunction to make your videos do well. Title, tags, and the description box. Those things, they need to match up. That's actually crucial. <laughs> I learned this not even that long ago and it has made a huge difference in my channel and my videos and my ratings etc So if you've noticed a lot of the time youtubers They will put in the first sentence of their description box something having to do with the title for example This video is about how to get famous on YouTube in their title how to get famous on YouTube and then their tags one of the tags will be how to get famous on YouTube because when it's in all different three places when you search how to get famous on YouTube, your video will most likely be one of the first ones to pop up because it makes it that much more relevant. That's why you'll see a lot of repetitive tags and description boxes and titles because it just makes it get up there when you search it that much easier. Also, Google keywords. I just started utilizing this. Like, to be honest, I could probably do a better job with it still. But if you go to a website called Google keywords, you type in whatever it is that your video is about. For example, I did a video about how to get famous on Instagram. Type in Instagram. Some of the top search things are how to get famous on Instagram, how to grow on Instagram, how to edit pictures on Instagram. Of course, only if they are in fact relevant to the video, you talked about them in the video, etc. All those tags would fit so I can slap them into the tag portion of the video and then they're in there. So if people search for those, my video is also likely to pop up. Overall, I don't think tags matter as much, but they definitely help, especially all three together. And I'll let you in on another little secret. I didn't even know this when I started, but I used to give credit. In fact, I still give credit if my video was inspired by another YouTuber. For example, my confronting my ex with the other woman video. I saw Carrie Dayton, who I just did a collab with like a few weeks ago. I saw her post a video with basically the same title. Obviously, I didn't steal her idea. Like the same similar situation happened to me and I made a story time video about it, but her video inspired me to tell my story. So in the description box, I put this video was inspired by Carrie Dayton and she ended up seeing it. And I think if anything, it might've gained some traffic because people found it from her video. Like it was on the sidebar or on the sidebar when people are watching other videos on her channel. It just popped up kind of because another YouTuber's name was stated in the description. Don't do that unless the video actually has to do with them or they really did inspire you because that's just kind of like a way to use their name to get fame and things like that. But if you actually talked about them in the video, you actually were inspired by whatever video they made, you can totally do that. It's totally fine. As well as it's just really nice and kind of like common courtesy to give someone credits if their video did inspire you. Like I've had people do that and I think it's so sweet. I don't get mad that my name was used in it. Like I think it's awesome. They gave me credit and that's like what people deserve is credit. Auto descriptions, auto tags, etc. Again, you can go over to Google keywords and search your name, like your channel name, Ali Hardesty, and all my most popular popular video titles will basically come up or other things that people commonly search with my name. Those are my auto tags. So every single video, those are automatically in there. I don't have to go and individually type all of them. Same thing with my auto descriptions. I have all my social media, business inquiries, my email address, everything looks the same. And then on top of that, I just add whatever the video is about or other added links that I want to put in there. But it creates a lot less work for you in the long run if you are going to be consistently uploading. Also, make sure that your videos upload automatically to private. I mean, you don't have to, but I didn't even know you could do that for the longest time. So literally, if I put a video live, it would go up at like three in the morning if that's just like when I was uploading. Didn't make any sense. So putting them on private means that you can space them out better, which is what I do now. I more commonly have like five plus videos unlisted or private on my channel before actually making them public for people to see live, like 
on YouTube. So that is never a bad idea. That way you can film a lot in bulk and spread them out and then film some more. Make sure that the titles and thumbnails are interesting. It doesn't have to be super clickbaity, but make it so that people at least want to click on it, you know, make it look nice. Cross promote, post yourself on Instagram. If you don't want to post it on Instagram, Instagram to mess up your feed or whatever, post it on your Insta story. Snapchat, now you can upload pictures from your camera roll. So I'll usually screenshot the video when it goes live and upload it that way. Or you can just take a video or picture straight from your laptop or something to indicate that it's now live, the video when you post it, because that way you get more views. Obviously, share it to Twitter. That really does make a difference, especially in the beginning if you don't really have like an active fan base. Your friends and family might still check it out, so you'll still get some views, some feedback, and some subscribers from that. And then the more you grow, people are probably going to follow your social medias from YouTube. Make sure that you're shouting out your social medias in your YouTube videos and in your description boxes like I already talked about, because those people will go over to Twitter, etc. And then if they don't have your notifications on or if they don't really come back and actively check your channel, when you post it on your other social medias that they're following, they'll come back and they'll watch your video. So basically, cross promotion is very, very important. It definitely helps to get your videos out there, get more views, and just get more subscribers and people who maybe were following you on one thing but not the other, they'll go over and follow you on there as well. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Collabing and networking with other YouTubers. So there is a right and a wrong way to do this. One, don't collab with people because you want their subscribers. That is so offensive. People will seriously hate you over that. It's called social climbing. Also, make friends with people first. Don't just try to collab with someone right off the bat. I have made some of the best friends ever through YouTube. Like, it's one of the most amazing ways to connect with people in the whole entire world, especially because you have that common interest with them. And so not even just collabing with that person helps to grow both yours and the other person's channel, but just bouncing ideas off of each other, helping to learn from each other. Maybe they can teach you something that you didn't know and vice versa. It's just really great to be a part of the community. So make sure that you do dive in, DM people at them, comment on their stuff and get to know them. Also commenting on people's videos, believe it or not, that actually helps people to come back to your channel. But don't be that person who comments saying self promo, check out my channel. I personally never care when people do that, like self promote all my video, all you want, but it doesn't really get people to come to your channel unless you did a video very similar. It's more so if you get a top comment or you're showing support, people might click on your channel and go check it out as well because I know I always read the comments. I don't know about you guys. I've definitely subscribed to people from the comments. If you genuinely enjoy someone's video, let them know. YouTubers really appreciate that and it helps us trend as well. So you doing that, we're gonna pay it forward probably and check out your stuff at one point or another if we notice you and other people who notice you in the comments. So it's just a way, again, to be interactive with the YouTube community and it kinda helps people to come across your channel and find you. So I would say that the quickest way out of everything I just said, which these things will help you get to this point, would be having a viral video. Having a video go viral. People go viral for many different reasons. I went viral for story times, conspiracy theories, and I just had like a twerking drive with me video go viral. Also my Instagram, how to video went pretty viral. To me, viral is when a video starts getting a lot of views in a very short amount of time, like it trends and that sort of thing. People see it in their recommended section. So that can happen to pretty much any video. It's not just like certain kind of videos tend to do that. Obviously, if you're a bigger YouTuber, it happens more often, but it can happen to anyone. That is kind of when you see a peak in your subscriber count as well as your earnings, which that'll be the whole other video. Like I said, don't get used to it because YouTube fluctuates all the time when it comes to numbers in terms of money and subscriber count. So you want to keep your channel consistent. You want to be consistently posting. Do not have a dead channel because to be honest, not only does that not provide your subscribers with content, but people will stop coming back because they know that you're not really going to be there. So they'll stop checking up on you. I know that I have YouTubers who I watch all the time because I know they're always posting. So even if I don't get a notification or I don't see that they posted a video, I'm probably going to go search their channel versus people who I know don't ever really upload. I kind of don't bother unless I specifically see a video and I'm like, oh wow, for once they uploaded, you know, nothing against that. Anyone can upload at their own pace. Also, I feel like sometimes people may upload too much. I had that problem in the beginning. So I do think it's good to find a balance and whatever you can juggle because if you're posting videos all the time, but they suck and they're rushed and you can tell that you're not genuinely enjoying filming, what's the point? Like it'd be better to have high quality videos less often, obviously. But that being said, make sure that you are putting out content for people. You can do it where you're filming in bulk and spreading it out like I do. But if you just don't upload, people are not really going to come back. You're going to have a lot of dead subscribers, especially if it's right after you had a viral video. Notice what videos do well on your channel and continue to do them. Take note of what people subscribe to your channel for and make sure that you continue to post those kinds of videos because that'll keep those views coming in. Like when I do videos that have done well before, 
explore my channel, they automatically get more views because that's what people subscribe for, you know? Also, try to make quality videos exporting in the highest quality you can, like HD. I did not do that in the beginning because I didn't know how. I'll have all my links to everything I personally use below, like camera, lighting. I used iMovie for the first year of my YouTube career, and then more recently, I started using Final Cut Pro. iMovie is free and basically the Walmart version of Final Cut Pro, so when you do decide to upgrade and pay the $300 to get Final Cut Pro, if you ever do, you'll pretty much know how to use it because you were already basically using a low class version of it. A lot of people film their first videos on their phone. I don't really think it makes much of a difference. A lot of my first videos that did really well were not even good quality. I didn't have lighting. I think the only thing I had was a camera and I don't even have that nice of a camera to be honest. This is the same camera that I've been using the entire time I've been making 